kind of wood. If I leave these to bear for next year, these are they're born on one, old, one year old wood. So they they bear the same way that which crop does that we looked at yesterday. Laterally on one year old wood. Peaches, right. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So they bear laterally on one year old wood. grow grapes, what they will do is they'll grow grapes without any trunk. The head is right on the ground. And they'll prune it back to spurs and then they'll bury it. Bury the whole vine for the winter. Once the snow is gone and the and the threat of, of the serious hard cold freezes are gone, they will un dig them up and they'll allow them to uh, bud out and then they'll just throw canes. You'll just have what's called your stump grapes. But uh, fortunately, in the in the southwest, it, it's uh, we have mild, mild, milder winters, and mild, it's pretty rare for uh, grapes to really get to hurt in the winter time. We always we worry about grapes in the Central Valley. Uh, uh, we worry about frost in the springtime when the shoots are just coming out. Uh, in April, uh, March, April, May, the shoots are just coming out, and that's. They'll, they'll start being fruitful from the very first bud all the way through the cane. And somewhere out here, they'll stop being fruitful, especially if it, this was growing late in the season. You'll notice that a lot of times the uh, tips of the cane start to die back during the winter time. And uh, the reason that is, is the carbohydrate storage is insufficient out here for that tip of that cane to survive. So. Um, it's normal for canes to die back a little bit on the tips. If they grew late in the summer and into the fall, they don't have time for this wood to mature. And when we go in the winter, if the wood was immature in the winter time, then it, it will just die back. Uh, the, the canes, the older part of the canes that are mature and hardened off, they won't die back. They'll survive the winter to be the fruiting area of the cane. Now, if um, there's uh, exemplified by the Thompson seedless. The Thompson seedless are not fruitful the first one, two, maybe even three buds. They, they, they'll throw shoots, they'll throw long shoots for next year, but um, those shoots won't have fruit on them. Okay, so we say, there are, we call our fruiting wood the one-year-old wood, and we say they bear laterally. But in reality, from a botanical standpoint, they're really bearing on, for, on current season's growth. They'll throw a shoot out, and the fruit will be on that shoot that comes out. The fruit is not born directly on this cane. So, so that's what really makes them different from the trees. So that new shoot will come out, they'll have tendrils, and each bud on that new shoot will either produce a tendril, it'll produce a leaf, or it'll produce a fruit. The arrangement is unique to each variety, fine, and and they'll they'll produce fruit. Uh, and you can you can put the canes anywhere you want. You can put the cordons anywhere you want. Uh, if you tour the Rhine River, you know, and visit the famous castles on the Rhine, uh, and two or three of those castles will have uh, what they call century vines. I don't think they're really 100 years old because phylloxera probably killed them uh, back in the back when phylloxera came through Europe. And, um, but they'll have a cordon like this. They'll bring it up the corner of the castle and they'll have the cordon go down the castle wall. They'll go down the courtyard and around the wall. It'll, it'll, yeah. How do you spell that? Is that what that's? Cordon, C-O-R-D-O-N. Okay, just so. Cordon, as in cordon bleu. bleu. Right, okay. What does blue mean? B-L-U-E. Something cordon bleu is a, a meat dish, isn't it? And, um, so we've got the trunk, and um, if if the if the if we're um, if we're if we're head training it, uh, then we'll call it just the trunk and the arms. 
And uh, most grapes in the world are cordon trained. That means they have a cordon that goes down a wire and they will either they'll usually have the most common system is two cordons, it's called a bilateral cordon in the book, or a four cordons, a quadrilateral cordon. And if it's a Thompson seedless, for instance, or black manuka, black manuka is cane pruned also like a Thompson seedless, um, it is, um, they'll just have um, short arms on the head of the vine and that's where our canes come from. And then we'll wrap the canes every year and replace them. So the, um, what we, it, it, and it's pretty simple, um, what would, what would the, the easy way to do, um, to prune grapes is, uh, we know we're going to spur prune this vine, and it's identical as if they're one cordon, four cordons, or a cordon going to your neighbor's house, the principle's the same. And, uh, usually most, most varieties will produce, you leave two bud spurs. There's some varieties, some varieties of table grapes, they have trouble getting enough fruit. They're not as fruitful, the bunches are real small. And sometimes they'll leave three bud spurs just to get their bud count up. And so commercial farmers will talk in terms of bud counts per vine. I don't, that's, there's no need for us to do that. This, um, see this cane here is very, very large here. And sometimes the very large ones, the ones that are bigger than your um, thumb, sometimes they're a little less fruitful. Sometimes they'll have fruit, uh, less fruit on them than a medium-sized cane. So this is a perfect size cane here. See this here? About the size of your finger. That's a good size cane. These are laterals, and they're just extensions of the cane. And the question is, well, what, what happens if we leave the lateral? Well, the lateral is, leaving the lateral it has the same effect as if I just left the cane that much longer. There's no reason to leave a lateral, and we rarely do that. So my recommendation is you go through and you cut you cut every single cane back to a two bud spur. We'll tie this one like this. This needs to be tied. somebody with a bigger shear to cut that off for me. Here's a nice spur. Hmm. Three, four, three, one, two. Uh, yeah, we're printing to a couple buds. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Sometimes I can't see too well, so I'm not getting it just right. But this needs to be tied down. Try to tie it flat if you can. The um, the way to speed up the process here would be to um, have somebody go through with a knife and a wire cutters and cut these wires off. Get all your ties off before you prune. And two of you could just go down the row, one, one on each side, cut them off and, and, throw, and throw them in a be uh, bucket so you don't have them blowing around. So that way, that'll greatly speed up your pruning system. You won't be tugging on the ties the whole time and have them uh, hanging out here. The, um, so we've, the cordon wire simply provides us a place to tie the cordon and keep it straight. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. But um, the, uh, the catch wire is here because this is kind of a windy, breezy location. And what sometimes happens is your new tender shoots, when they're only about this long, will come out. And the ones that are pointing into the wind sometimes will get thrown around and they'll get snapped off. Well, the, with the catch wire, the, the, um, the shoots will come out and their tendrils will gra immediately grab that wire for support. 
and so that'll give your just gives your foliage something to hold on to, so it doesn't get snapped off in the wind. Okay, so you go. Remember, I said before you start cutting, you you have to figure out whether you need to extend the cordon because you don't want to spur prune that one off. We're going to keep this as a future cordon. So that's the only thinking you need to do initially is if you want to have any repairs to make any cordons to fill in someplace. And that's that that so that kept that kept me from stripping it off by accident. Don't um, from a plant, from a farmer's stand a viewpoint and from a horticultural stand a viewpoint, uh, ignoring varieties, we don't if, if in a vineyard in a, in a vineyard situation where the whole row is the same variety, we don't view the individual vine as a single unit of production. We view uh, a, a foot, per, foot, uh, foot of row as a unit of production. Because we don't care where one vine starts and one wind ends. We don't care if a vine occupies just two spaces or one space. All that we care is that every meter of row is productive. And it's productive by having a healthy cordon, uh, a piece of healthy cordon in every foot of the row, and we don't care where we get it. So, so farmers just want the row to be filled in. So the, their unit of production, in their mind, is the row. Okay. The dynamic here is different because the varieties are all different. So we want the um, one each vine to keep its own space, so we can preserve that variety. So what variety is this? <laughs> So that's both fantasy. Okay, now we'll go back and say, okay, now I need to space, space my uh, spur apart. That's one, two, there's a nice spur, hands width apart. These two are small, I'm gonna keep this one, it's a little bit bigger. Single that one out, that's a nice one there. Don't need that scrawny one in the back. Got three here, that's a nice spur there. Ah, I should have left two because I got a blank spot here. If there's a blank spot, then we'll leave a couple of spurs. I'm not thinking ahead. That one looks like a die. That's a nice one there. Okay, got one there, one there. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave three here because we have this big bare space here. Sometimes you just lose, lose the spur position. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay. So we've got two or three spurs. As the spurs get older, see this was last year's spur, see? I got rough bark on it. That was last year's. This is this year's spur. Now eventually these things get longer and longer, don't they? And pretty soon we'll have arms that are all the way up here, coming off these cordons. We want to keep them below. So what I'm going to look for is an opportunity to get that spur position back down low again. So if a spur came off down at the base here, I would favor that one and cut this off to get the height back down. The vines aren't that old, so that's not a, an issue for you yet, but it will be an issue. So you might keep that in mind that you don't want this to keep going up indefinitely. And then, you know, and they're not going to be pretty and even. You know, sometimes they'll look scraggly. You'll have a, a whole bunch in one spot sometimes. So this is last year's spur here, see? This year's spur, last year's spur, this year's spur. Both of them are getting long, a little bit longer. Okay. So just the same thing, kind of just cut off entirely later or not? Well, you leave a pretty big bang blank spot here. Okay. Uh, okay. If there's one right there, right then you can cut it off. Yeah. I don't worry about it until we're about our third generation. Okay. Walking itself. When did you decide to make a new cordon? Oh, when it's too old, when you start losing, it's... Okay.